Our business is called Pie Maisonne. We sell pies. We have about 22 different flavours and put like authentic spices and flavourings into them. We want everybody up and down the UK to eat these pies that have come from or oh, manufactured in Blackburn. I've never like put myself as a face of it because it takes everybody like because especially because it's in my home, everybody has to be involved. So. All of my children, my husband and my family, they're part of the journey that I'm, I've been on for the last three years and they'll probably be part of the journey. Uh, and I don't want to forget that, that's what makes it special, I think. Good food, good food makes good people, I think. It, you know, it gives, gives you good energy, good vibes. You're making it and it's from your home and it's so much love and care and you've, you've put everything into it and whereas if it went out and it was manufactured, it just would not have the same taste as it would as a homemade. A homemade pie is a homemade pie. If you get pie from outside, it just will not taste the same. I guarantee you that. <laughs> when I moved here, I thought it was such a small town. Uh, but these last three years, since we've started making this, and the people we've met, and the things we're doing, and the things we're getting involved in, it's just really exciting and crazy. But the idea that I'm just like a, a small girl in a small town on a small street in Blackburn. It's just, it's, that's, that's exciting, that's just, it's, it's strange and exciting. My business kind of takes over the house. The loft's full of stock. I've got my studio that's in the corner of my living room, a workshop in the dining room where I kind of assemble things. I studied uh, painting, sort of gravitated towards um, sculpture. I kind of saw furniture design and product design as like a practical sculpture. My design ethos is, um, is that form follows construction. Um, which is a bit of play on the, the uh, traditional um, form follows function idea. I'm sort of looking at the way that you can make an object, um, the way that an object can fit together uh, before I'm thinking about necessarily what, it, what the finished product's going to look like. So it's a um, really pragmatic kind of thought process. It's definitely self-expression for me to create something and then for somebody else to appreciate it and, uh, and to buy that and, and uh, put that into their own home is, uh, is, is amazing, yeah. My business is Cover Me 
and the idea came about to do stylish, modest wear that's quite on trend. Whilst I was at uni, I felt that there was a real need for clothes that were stylish but you're still modest. I think there was a real gap in the market where I needed to go out to buy fashionable, stylish clothing, but there just wasn't anything available. I learned to sew when I was 12, funnily enough. My mum could never sew, so she, she made sure that I could sew. To start off with, I hated it. I hated the whole concept of going to learn how to sew. But then when I got into it, I kind of found like my inner love, really. To me, the best thing is putting the right fabric with the right design. When I get all the comments on Instagram saying, wow, this is beautiful, this is really nice. Honestly, that's the best thing about the job. That's what makes me become so confident to know that what I am doing is right. I mean, when I first started it, I did kind of intend to cater to the younger market, but it's just kind of worked out. I think because of the alterations that we offer, that we, our, our clientele are more based on real women, you know, women that have had babies, women that are in jobs. Um, you know, you don't have to be young and skinny and perfect and have beautiful skin to wear our stuff. When I got married, my sewing machine came along with me and um, my husband found it quite... He didn't quite have the space to put it because we were still living with the extended family. But anyway, he always jokes about it that I came with a sewing machine. I'm a sewing, the sewing machine is part of me, which is quite funny. It's just come to me as second nature, really, sewing has. Um, and the family just fitting around my sewing really rather than the sewing fitting around the family. We want to, the plan is to expand the business to as far as it will go. I'm quite happy on the scale that I'm working at but in future definitely it needs to get bigger. My head's full of stuff where I want to just get it out, you know, it can be anything like from the chairs and my guitars, the war scene diorama, the dollar sign. I get a buzz out of doing it. But to be honest, I'm here all the time and I love working from home. I get over that. I love it. I don't have to go out into some mundane thing that I never wanted to do ever. I can just crack on what I want to do. Mrs. is there, sweet, supports me all the way, so I love it. And if I can create something new out of old, that's great. My company is called Ida and Rudy after my children because they're the reason why I started making clothes. It's organic children's clothing. I try to pride myself in getting fabrics that are a little bit different and quite funky. And I guess the reason I started doing that is because I wanted to see my children dressed in something a little bit out of the ordinary something that not every other child would be wearing and then I kept getting requests off people can you make me some leggings or can you make me a top so it kind of grew from there posting pictures on Instagram and having people comment and when I said I made them they kind of like asked well, can you make me some as well Yes, yeah, so I think, gosh, have I really made all that? And do people actually want to buy it? It sometimes just surprises me that it's just quite humbling, I guess, that that people want to to buy my clothes. <laughs> it's tempting delights. I do biscuits, I do cakes, I do desserts. I mean, I started it off um, in 2005, but before that, I went to Africa once um, in 1999. 
Family's there, so I bought some recipe books from there. So I tried some recipes out during my brother's wedding time. And then after that, I decided to do something with my life. So I started off with the biscuits. Once I started with the biscuits, um, I wanted to do the cakes as well. So with the cakes, I actually looked for courses and I found a, a place where I could do cake decorating course. So I started off there. And from there, I started doing the cakes as well. It's that feedback I get good as well. I and mean, then I've been recommended to quite a lot of people, so people that actually do come and order stuff from me. And then I do quite a lot of charity events as well. People who do charity, so I give my biscuits out to them. So when the biscuits goes out, people they actually like them, so they come back to me as well to buy them. Last year, some customers actually ordered biscuits on, on Facebook, so they were happy with it. The social media has actually helped a lot because I got quite a lot of customers from there because I know my biscuits are good and I've had like, loads of recommendations about that, so I'm happy with that. I enjoy more like doing the process of it. I enjoy it, it's like... It's my own time, innit? It's something I enjoy doing. My business is called Oh You Pretty Things. I make, I'd say, a quite a quirky range of handmade jewellery and accessories. I kind of fell into it by accident. I wanted to start making gifts for people when I was on maternity leave. I didn't have enough disposable income to be spending the, the kind of money that I used to. So I started making handmade gifts for people and it was only then that people said, well actually you could sell this stuff. I tried out a few different processes, I tried out a few different materials. I pushed myself, my creativity really, because if you'd have said to me five years ago, sit down and do me a painting and make a necklace from it, I would never have thought that it was anything I could do. It's not your high street stuff, it's not the stuff that you can find in any shop that you walk into. And that's, that's what I get out of making my stuff, is, is I'm putting a, something a little bit different out there. I do love it now and I love the fact that I can sit down and in a weekend create something from scratch and somebody be wearing it two days later. I think that's fantastic. It's born out of necessity being in my home because I wanted to be here for my children. I wanted to be able to pick up my children every day from school and so it allows me that flexibility. I just love the, the freedom that it gives me, being able to work out of my home. I'm interested primarily in processes and materials. There's an element of very traditional woodwork and there's an element of more sort of narrative-driven, artistic, conceptual work. The more I enjoy my work, the more I kind of get consumed by my work and the more time I invest into it. At each stage of working from home and working as a self-employed person, it's felt very different. The constant throughout all of them is, uh, is that it gives me a temptation to become almost a workaholic. I've always made things since I was very, very young. And I was sort of an only child of a single parent, so I spent a lot of time just on my own. And I would make things and draw things. And I don't think I really did it for having a product afterwards, you do it for the process and just because for the occupation of doing it. 
I think critiquing and improving is, is essential as a designer and I think that you know every good designer is generally a bit overly critical of their own work and that's very good for, for sort of improving your craft. A lot of what I do involves very sharp tools and potentially very dangerous activity. So you have to concentrate entirely on what you're doing and you can't be daydreaming about, you know, what you might like to go out and buy or have for tea or the emails that you haven't responded to or worrying about, you know, any of the number of things that we've all got to worry about. So it, it's quite meditative in that, in that sense.